All right, guys, today I want to share something with you that I'm very excited about, which is running smart audio from the Unify Pro video transmitter into the Omnibus F4 Pro flight controller. So why in the world would you want to hook up your VTX to your flight controller? Well, by doing so with smart audio, you can not only see your VTX settings like power output, band, and channel right in your OSD, but you can also change those settings using your radio. And the best part about it is it's super easy to wire up. It's literally one wire. All right, in the past I've shown you how to wire up your Omnibus F4 boards, and today we're gonna to add just one new wire. You're gonna use the audio wire coming out of the Unify Pro, and you're gonna run that to UR3TX, also known as TX3. I'm not even kidding, it's as simple as that. Now plug in your copter and go to the ports tab in Betaflight. Now on UART3, you're gonna turn on the peripheral TBS Smart Audio and hit save and reboot. Okay, to get into the options, you're gonna hold left on the left stick and up on the right stick. We're gonna get on to features. All right, and then we're gonna choose VTX SA for Smart Audio. We're not gonna use this VTX TR. I think that's for the Tramp, and that's just not what we're using in this build. All right, so you can see at the top, I'm on E1 frequency 5705, and then the bottom right, you can see that I'm on power 25 milliwatts. I'm gonna change that to 200 milliwatts, go down to set, and then confirm. And now my VTX is restarted, I'm now on 200 milliwatts. I can set that from 25 to 200 to 500 to 800 as you can see here, but I'm just going to leave it at 25 for now. One thing that I found kind of confusing are that bands A, B, and E are all labeled boss cam, and I don't know if it's because it's running off the screen, but you can't see it change when you go through the different bands. You can see that here where the frequency is obviously being updated, but the band readout is not. Alright, now if I go in and change my band or channel, and then go down to set, I'm going to lose video because my receiver is on a different channel. The one place I see this feature being particularly huge would be uh, on race day. Uh, video issues are very common, and if someone comes to me and says, Roscoe, I see your OSD in my goggles, um, it's very easy for me to just pull up my OSD and say, look, here I am on my assigned channel E2 at 200 milliwatt, and there's really no arguing with that. If by chance I'm on the wrong video and I check it, I don't have to jump up, sprint out to the line. I'm digging under my top plate to get to my VTX buttons to set the channel and band, and by the time I get back to my seat, I'm out of breath and flustered, and that's just not a good place to be when the race is about to start. It's so much easier to just pull up the OSD, set your band channel or power, hit save, and your thumbs up for good video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if it helped you out, please uh, like and subscribe below, and uh, thanks for watching.